Hello everyone, this is Julie from August Birdsong and I'm bringing you my uh, latest visual journal. It's a Christmas journal as you can see with Santa Claus on the cover and it's called Santa is Coming to Town. Now this Santa figure on the cover here was painted along with several other <clears throat> Santa Claus images uh, by my friend Catherine Stenham, who is an artist. And she had a collection of all these Santa Claus images that she had painted over the years. And we decided to put them in different settings. And so she sent me the figures and I cut them out of the backgrounds they were in and built up backgrounds around them. And so as you can see on this cover here, we have uh, Santa Claus out in nature. It says moonlit skies, starry nights, and uh, wildlife, the owls, a wolf howling at the moon in the background and uh, a little hedgehog down here are even visiting with Santa. And the challenge with this particular project was that if most of the figures are all Santa Claus, how do I make the pages feel different? And so I decided to approach it as um, a visit with Santa Claus as he travels the world on Christmas Eve, visiting various children's homes all over the world. And so the main way I could bring that feeling to you was through the background papers and different ephemera that I built up in uh, the scenery around the Santa Clauses. And so here is the back of uh, the binder. This was made in a vintage um, three ring, well it's actually not three rings, I think it's five rings, binder by Better Homes and Gardens. It was a cookbook, uh, I believe, uh, when it was originally created. And what I did with it is I, I gutted the pages out of it and um, as you can see, covered it uh, with some decoupaged uh, rice paper here on the cover and scrapbook paper from Stamperia in the background and then all the ephemera and images of Catherine's uh, that I incorporated into my storytelling. So let's begin and we're going to be visiting uh, various images of Santa Claus or Saint Nick as he travels the world. And so on opening up the ring binder, first looking at this inside page here, um, you can see I knew right away when I saw this image by Catherine that, you know, this was a southwestern feel. And so I went ahead and placed this Santa um, again, sort of out in the wild, but with a southwestern feel. Could be um, the southwestern United States even. And so I have cactus images in the background and these beautiful golden flowers, which actually are not the flowers that these cacti, cacti would bloom, but I was trying to pick up the various golds and rusts and, and uh, browns throughout uh, Santa's beautiful coat that Catherine painted. We have a coyote here with Santa, uh, and he is bringing his toys, and we have uh, dried corn in the background and a beautiful butterfly um, flying amidst all of the nature. Uh, and let me get that about as close as so you can see those beautiful details in there. And then we start into our journey. And I'm going to open the binder so I can hold the pages up for you to see better. Uh, and in this scene here, Catherine painted uh, Santa riding on a horse, and he's dashing through the snow 
I wrote. And for the snow, I used, this is um, just kind of old lace from just a doily that had worn out and was sort of falling apart. So I cut it apart some more and just used those natural curves as the, you know, the piles of snow that the horse is dashing through. Up here in the trees, we have some little elves painting little berries, it looks like, for the holidays. And um, just the beautiful colors of the Christmas season here with the reds and the golds in the background as well. All right, and moving on then, we're going to turn the page. And I have a little bit of history on Santa Claus uh, for you as well. Santa Claus is an American version of a saint named Saint Nicholas who was really a, a man. Uh, he was born in 280 AD in modern day Turkey and he was orphaned young when his parents uh, died from the plague. And um, he went into the Christian church, and by the age of 19, he was declared a bishop, and he was known as the boy bishop because he was the youngest uh, bishop the church had ever had. And he was a wealthy man, actually, because his parents had been wealthy and he inherited the wealth. But he lived simply and chose to give a lot of that wealth away. And so St. Nicholas became known throughout the land for his kindness and generosity. And an example of that is the story of years ago of the three sisters. And the three sisters were poor girls who would end up in slavery if they did not have dowries to provide for a husband because in those days um, a daughter had to bring a dowry money to a marriage in order to be considered as a bride. And the one sister, who I have here in this photo with angel wings, uh, decided to sell herself into slavery to get money for the other two sisters' dowries. And when Nicholas heard of this, he was very saddened. And so in the night, he dropped gold coins three nights in a row in stockings that were hanging by the window to dry in the night air. And by doing that, he was able to provide the dowry for the three sisters, all three of them. So none of them needed to go into slavery. And so the page opens up, and here Catherine painted this beautiful angel. And look at all the beautiful colors she worked into that. And I've placed these little sort of angels um, around the larger angel as well. And they reminded me of the, the little sisters in the story. And on this page, we have the stained glass doors representing the church um, of St. Saint, Saint Nicholas. And here I found online a beautiful painting of St. Nicholas and um, placed that on the inside here. And it says, remember December 6th, because Ni St. Nicholas, or Nicholas, um, the bishop, died in uh, 343 A.D. on December 6th. And for centuries after that, um, children would hang their stockings or put out their shoes in hopes, like the sisters, that they would receive gifts. Um, and they would put those out on the night of December 5th because December 6th was St. Nicholas Day. After his death, he was made a saint. And um, that was another reason why they were celebrating and remembering December 6th. So December 5th is St. Nicholas Eve.
And when I was a little girl, I grew up hanging my stocking uh, on the hearth in hopes that St. Nicholas would visit. And I didn't hang my stocking on Christmas Eve because that St. Nicholas visited um, on December 6th. All right, and so moving along here. Here I have put fruit and nuts. Here's some apple and orange. I always had an orange in the bottom of my stocking. And nowadays, oranges are easy to come by. But years ago, having an orange in the middle of December um, in parts of the world that were cold with snow and ice was a real rare treat. And so something like that would have been highly valued as a gift. Um, and nuts and possibly some little sugar treats. And so here we're going to move on. And here is another page about Nicholas. And so this is um, from uh, a Russian artist years ago, who uh, here you have the saint depicted here uh, in this tag. And here I just went ahead and decorated the other side here because we'll be going into um, the medieval period here in a minute. But before I get there, I wanted to tell you the story of Rue Claus, or Rough Nicholas. Now, years ago, um, throughout Europe and maybe other parts of the world, St. Nicholas, yes, was associated with gifts and kindness, but as Christianity spread, it became very tied to children knowing their Bible lessons. And so parents would tell their children, you know, you need to be learning your Bible verses and your Bible lessons. Otherwise, Rue Claus might visit you. And Rue Claus was a um, demon sort of character who carried a sack and he was associated, if you think of sometimes we talk about if you were given coal in your stocking because you'd been naughty, well, that would have been associated with Rue Claus. He also carries this switch, these branches, to um, uh, give a spanking. All right. And so children were afraid of Rue Claus visiting. And so that was incentive. That was a motivation to learn their Bible lessons. In some places, Rue Claus was called Krampus, and this is a, a German, a vintage German postcard, and it says, uh, Gruß vom Krampus, which means greetings from Krampus. And so you can see here he's stuffing the little boy into his basket. Not good, not good. And the little girl received some fruit, it looks like, as a treat. But here you can see how Rue Claus or Krampus was depicted with horns and this horrible long red tongue. And so that's a side of, of the Santa Claus image. Uh, modern day, we don't hear about too much unless in some places they actually have sort of Krampus festivals as, as um, you know, just another... Um, added celebratory thing at Christmas time, but definitely back then you did not want to be visited by Rue Claus or also known as Krampus. And so on this page we have a flip here and I just have some images in the back of possibly treats or games or maybe even a stuffed toy, candies, that children might have looked forward to receiving uh, at Christmas, and also Christmas cards. And here are three gold coins, again, just as a reminder of the three sisters. So opening this page here, we have some more images of um, Santa or Saint Nick, 
or St. Nicholas. And in this one on the left, we have um, beautiful images in the background. And here we have a character riding on this log who the Dutch would have probably called Jewel Nice. And he was their version of St. Nicholas. And their mythology um, had a lot about elves and and think of gnomes and trolls and a lot of those images from um, characters living in the forests. And so Jewel Nice was their Saint Nick. And the idea was you would not only put out like your shoes, your clogs for um, Saint Nick to be filled or Jewel Nice, but you also left out some treats for Jewel Nice and his helpers. Because if Jewel Nice was angered, he might not leave you treats. He might destroy the family's crops or make the, the cow sick. And so there was a lot of fear and superstition around showing respect to Jewel Nice and his elves working in the forest. And so here you can see a nod to Jewel Nice. And here is another uh, version of Santa painted by uh, Catherine. And this one I just loved with the tones of the soft white and the, the browns and beiges and a bit of the gold. And throughout this journal I've hidden a little pesky mouse who's making his way uh, among Santa's journey, sneaking in and out as Santa delivers his um, gifts. And on this page, this whole background here in image was painted by Catherine. And so it looks like we're in Russia. And Russia's uh, version of Saint Nick uh, involved smoke holes and visiting lands throughout the um, universe. And he was called, and I might not say this perfect, but I, I, I'll do my best. Uh, Nikolai Kudyavoritz, I think is how it was pronounced, or something similar. And he was known as a wonder worker who traveled the world in his sleigh that was pulled by flying reindeer. Sounds similar to what we think of Santa Claus in America, the way he travels. Well, so here we have maybe Nikolai Kudyavoritz um, bringing toys to Russian children. All right, and so we turn the page, and we're going to be in medieval uh, times here. And here we have a, a Saint Nick, or Santa Claus, delivering a lighted Christmas tree. A fir tree and that tradition began with um, Martin Luther who with the Protestant Reformation and he was out one night a winter night and the high uh, sky was filled with stars and he looked up through the trees with the stars sparkling and felt like he was looking at heaven and so the tradition really started of lighting candles on a Christmas tree through Martin Luther, although it was very dangerous. Uh, and here we have a little uh, doorway into the village we're entering on. And down here, I've just used lace uh, for my Saint Nick here. Uh, Germans often referred to him as Christmas man or Father Christmas, especially with the Protestant Reformation, because the worship of saints became was outlawed. And so it was not okay anymore to say Saint Nicholas. And so he became Christmas man or um, Father Christmas. And so this is a flip up. And here 
and I'll show you both pages. We're maybe in the court of uh, Henry VIII, and we're celebrating because it is the season of Yule, and Yule is associated with um, pagan beliefs about the shortest day of the year. When um, you think about, you know, when night settles in at the earliest time and the sun rises at the latest. And it was seen as a time uh, where you, as, as a, a community, you were settling down for the deep sleep of winter. And there was a lot of celebration during the 12 days of Christmas uh, for this period of Yule or Yuletide. And as Christianity spread more, Yuletide was also called Christmas tide. And during this time, it was 12 days of festivities where no working man was forced to work and, or compelled to work. Now, for slaves, that probably was very different. But working men were given the time off. And it represented um, a period of coming up of rest and sleep and death with winter. The plants and crops all had been harvested and the celebrations were going on and everything would sleep hopefully through winter and survive to see the coming spring. And so if you were in a castle or a, a bigger village at this time, or even a small community, you would have been preparing food and treats, whatever you could um, afford for this time. And so you might have made a plum pudding, which our version of pudding, at least in the United States, is much more of a maybe a chocolatey or vanilla um, sorbet of sorts. But a plum pudding at this time was made of beef broth with minced bits of meat you had saved, plums, breadcrumbs, wine, and spices. And all of this was put into a sack because there was no baking powder. And so they would need to boil it. And that's where we get the idea of like pudding molds. If you think of holiday um, oblong or circular pudding molds, those came uh, from the idea of boiling the pudding. And that is what actually like baked it um, because there was no baking powder. And so people started at the beginning of Advent Advent, they would put together the ingredients for the plum pudding and they would let it ferment and sit in the bag for weeks. And remember, this was before um, refrigeration as well. And then once it was, you know, the, the beginning of Christmas tide with the 12 days of Christmas. It would be boiled and prepared. You probably had ale and other wines uh, or beer to drink. And you had music and dancing and celebration and storytelling. And even the game or the song, um, Partridge in a Pear Tree, came from this period as a memory game for the 12 days of Christmas. And the story behind the partridge in a pear tree, they think evolved because um, in France, partridges do perch in pear trees. Uh, and in French, it, the word for partridge is un perdri, P-E-R-D-R-I-X. And it sounds a lot, pear tree sounds a lot like pear tree. Now, in England, partridges do not hang out in the trees. They're ground dwelling. 
but they think that is where um, kind of that connection with a partridge in a pear tree came into the song. And the 12 Days of Christmas then, um, Partridge in a Pear Tree, was a memory game. All right. And people would go around and they would dance and they would actually put on costumes. And it was called mumming and guising. And think of the word disguise uh, or mumming like the word mummy. And in, in the fact that you would wrap yourself up in other uh, clothing or cloth. And they would go door to door singing with revelry. And if they were fortunate, um, people would hand out treats of food and drink. And really it was considered bad luck not to treat the mummers um, or the wassailers. Um, I think wassail was a drink, I want to say, but I need to double check that one. But this time also had a lot of superstitions. And so since we are looking into the origins of St. Nicholas and Santa Claus, um, I wanted to touch on a little bit about the pagan um, Yule time that existed long before Christmas tide and Christianity. And many superstitions evolved uh, and were carried on even into the Middle Ages and medieval period. Things like if, if uh, Christmas Day was on a Sunday, it was considered good luck. And that 